Mr. King, how you doing? Hey. Tyler Everhart, nice to meet you. Good to see you. Glad you had some time to meet with me today. Yeah, I know you're busy on Sunday. For sure. How's, uh, how's life going for you lately? Good, busy. Uh, yeah, Sundays busy. are busy, but uh, season's going well. Um, headed towards state tournament, so. Okay, cool. Kind of round them out. Headed yeah. towards state tournament as a full-time pastor as well. Yeah, oh yeah. Busy life. But we got um, a week left of games and then a couple practices and then a week from Thursday we start. Awesome, yeah. We'll have to um, come out to the games. You guys play tomorrow, right? We do. Yeah. yeah. So it'll be our third game in four days. Wow. Yeah. Pretty tough pretty, to do. <laughs> pretty tough schedule. Yeah. 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 I'll have to try to make it out to the game. Yeah. But again, uh, thanks for meeting me. For um, sure. So the first question I had for you was what's your guys' record and what are some of your maybe some highlights or just thoughts on the team this year? Yeah. So we are 15 and 5. Um, thoughts on the team this year we, we've for the first time in a while we've got some seniors that are uh, program guys now so but this is my third year doing this first year we had some seniors but it was my first year with them um, so they were learning me I was learning them uh, last year we didn't have any seniors at all so this year the junior or this year's senior class was juniors so they were growing up uh, but this year we've got five seniors who all all contribute uh, to varying degrees and so that's nice yeah. Um, two of our main leaders, our captains, our seniors. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's just a different mentality for the team, and so it's been good yeah. to have that as part of our group. Yeah, it's definitely important when you have seniors leading the way. Um, that was actually my next question is, uh, can you give some names of some of those impact seniors and maybe just a piece on them of what they yeah. do to help so, younger players? Um, Gavin Osborne, Coach Osborne's son, uh, is, is our point guard. And it's funny, um, his sophomore year when I started coaching him, I, and I started talking to him about, hey, I think I want you to be the point guard. Mm -hmm. That was not what he thought mm -hmm. at all. Didn't want to do that. Uh, was not in for that. Yeah. Um, but he's that guy. He doesn't score a lot, mm -hmm. but he does everything else. So when you look at a stat sheet at the end of the game, that's been a good game for him. He might have four or five points, but he's gonna have seven assists and five steals and seven boards and just yeah. kind of all across, and that's just him. Mm -hmm. It's just he's kind of an everywhere guy. He sets the tone for us defensively uh, with his energy, and also he is just, he's smart, he's a coach's kid, mm -hmm. uh, so he's smart. Um, John Dillon is our, probably gonna be our MVP um, when it comes to just doing whatever needs to be done for that particular game. So he'll lead us in rebounding if we need that, he'll lead us in scoring if we need that. Uh, he's led us in assists, you know, when we needed that. He's turned a whole lot more into a playmaker this year than just kind of a one, uh, one type person um, can do a lot more things uh, defensively he's doing a lot better this year um, so and then then the third one I think that's probably a spark for us is a guy named Andrew Nolan he's a soccer player who plays basketball uh, he's lefty he's fast uh, real thin um, but just finds a way to make plays and he's one of those guys that you need a play made and he'll figure out a way to make that play whether it's a a steal on a layup or a rebound or some three from the corner or whatever it might be. And so when you look at his stats at the end of the game, typically he's not like way up in anything. But when you think about key moments in the game, he's one of those kids that's typically there in a key moment. Definitely, yeah. Uh, so talking to Coach Osborne a little bit, um, before you took over at Cross Lanes Christian, mm -hmm. you know, the program wasn't great. So he's told me about your four-year mission. Is that what yeah. you call it, correct? Mm -hmm. Uh, can you explain a little bit of that and really what was the goal behind that when you took over? So kind of rebuild the legacy. So mm -hmm. the when you go in the gym at Cross Lanes, you see banners all over the place. Yeah. And um, there was a legacy there of winning for a long time, long time and competing for championships. And um, that had kind of gone away for a little while. And the program itself uh, was, was less than what it used to be, I guess is how I'd put it. Um, and so trying to trying to do a new era, but kind of building on the legacy that's been. And so anytime you do that, um, you know, it's gonna take a few years to get things implemented and for kids to buy in and for them to grow up in that program. Uh, so this is year three. And so we think this year we're competing mm -hmm. for it. Um, we, we went from uh, uh, four and six our first year, which is a COVID year, mm -hmm. uh, to 11 and nine last year to now we're 15 and five this year and so every year it's been an incremental jump which has been nice um, and so we feel like this year as we go in state tournament uh, we have a sh we have a shot at competing we're probably not the favorite 
mm -hmm. going in. Uh, but we think next year we will be mm -hmm. uh, as, as that program continues to mature. So that's that four year mission is where okay. we, so if we hang a banner this year, we're probably a year early, yeah. uh, which would be awesome. Yeah, that's so, great, yeah, obviously. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, just watching you guys in some of the games, I've been to a few games and just what you guys see, I see players seem like they're having fun out there together. They seem like they really mesh well and the chemistry is up. Can you explain maybe some things that you've done or they've took upon themselves that have been able to build that chemistry? Yeah, I, I think we're blessed with just good guys mm -hmm. is part of it. We don't have a lot of egos. Mm -hmm. um, we're the team, we joke about it, but we're the team that all the other teams like to hang out with. <laughs> it's so it's, it's kind of weird, but they all come to our games and watch our games and like our guys, and that's just our guys. So they, they genuinely like each other. Yeah. Uh, and so when you think about chemistry, it's not forced. Like it's not something I'm having to make them do. It just comes naturally. And then they really, really buy in to share, uh, try to make somebody else better. And that's something uh, Coach O and I talk about a lot, kind of that chemistry side, but also the, the he used to call it the hospitality thing mm -hmm. when you guys had the H's. Uh, but this idea of, of I can contribute to your success mm -hmm. and that's our success. Uh, and they really buy into that. And so ball movement, uh, working for each other, talking to each other, helping each other out, screening for somebody, get them open. They care about their assist numbers almost more than they care about their point numbers. Like we're just, we're in a good spot. So we've, as we've gone through the year, we've had all kinds of different people lead us in scoring, yeah. um, depending on the game and depending on the matchup and who we were playing and, and they all celebrate that. So it's a really cool team to coach in that way. Yeah, that's awesome. I can definitely see that when I watch yeah. you guys play. A lot of ball movement, sharing the ball. Mm -hmm. It's fun to watch. Um, so I want to shift a little away from the team now and just talk about you a little bit. Yeah. So what? So obviously this is your first. This is your third year coaching. Right? Third year coaching. Third year coaching. So mm -hmm. what was the reasoning behind getting into coaching? I know you've yeah. never been a coach before. So yeah. what? What really drew you to help these guys out? That's a good charge? question. Um, so I coached soccer right out of college okay. in Florida for a couple of years. Uh, soccer was my first sport school and college um, but I never coached basketball before and always wanted to kind of in the back of my mind like that would be fun a little more engagement from a coach during a game than soccer is and so I like that kind of the intensity of that the competition of that um, but I think this one was was more spurred by um, something outside of my regular day job uh, and so it gives me something else to think about and I can kind of do go do that for a season and have fun yeah. uh, but I've missed uh, invest in the lives of students and so that's been a part of my life for a long time um, and so this gives me a chance to jump back in and invest in the lives of students and then my daughter is on the girls basketball team and so our schedule matches up so a lot of weight trips and things we're going together uh, and so it's allowed me to be around her but not be coaching her um, and then a lot of my friends have kids on this team and so I don't have a kid on this team and so it lets me kind of stay out of that um, but a lot of my friends, uh, their kids are on this team, so it's a chance to, for us to kind of be together. So it fills a lot of things, uh, that competition, that camaraderie, uh, but even being around friends and groups and things like that. Uh, so it's been fun. Yeah, awesome. Uh, I just have one more question. Mm -hmm. um, you mentioned um, investing, mm -hmm. you know, being able to invest in your kids, not your kids per se, but yeah. your team. Mm -hmm. What are some things that maybe you preach to them on a daily basis or things that you try to teach them constantly, maybe not even about basketball, but just about life. Yeah, I think I think there's two things that, that, that both basketball and life that we talk about a lot. One is, is effort. Um, we have we have a lot of good, good dudes, um, but effort is something they have to think about. Yeah. And so we talk about effort. Uh, and so that's applicable to class, to my family, to my relationships, uh, to whatever I'm going to do as a career in the future, um, you know, all that stuff, but also to basketball. Like, I'm, I only have this day to give the effort for this day, and so we talk about that. Um, and then the other thing is to serve. Uh, so that's the team stuff that we just talked about. And that that is really applicable to both, to life and to basketball. Um, you get out what you put in, and so this this orientation of I'm, I'm here to serve others, um, is a is a thing that I think is a mark uh, for me is part of my faith. Um, it's a mark of a person with character uh, that that I exist so that I can help and I can contribute uh, to the life and, and ministry.
histories of other people. Uh, and that happens in basketball as well. You know, I'm here as a team, it's not just one person, but we're here as a unit. And so how can I contribute? Whether that's I'm a, I'm a bench person who's there to really make sure energy's high or I'm the leading scorer. There, you know, there's all kinds of ways that we can serve each other. Um, so those are the two things I think that we talk about the most with this team, other than regular stuff, fundamentals yeah. and you know, all that stuff. But those are the two things that we tend to really spend some time on. Yeah, of course. It seems to be working as you guys have had great success this season. Um, that's all I got for you today. So thanks for uh, meeting with me. <laughs> Tyler Eberhardt, <laughs> right here in the flesh. <laughs>